You have so much drag race to cover in such a short time. Very bad. It's just, uh, I'm excited to really get into it because, honey, you pulled a magic trick. Very bad. You pulled a trick because you did, you made an impact on your first season. Very bad, very true. Um, I went, okay, so here you go. Um, I believe that you should always study up for the job that you want. Mm -hmm. um, I learned that from Miss Asia O'Hara. You should look the part. <laughs> I didn't have the money, but bitch, the, <clears throat> the mindset was there. Um, I watched a show called Unreal on Hulu, which is like The Bachelor, but the behind the scenes. Yeah. And I learned how production worked. Uh -huh. So I was always well aware of the cameras. And two, I learned from the little crazy girl from that show. She said the confessionals are the money makers. Oh, so bitch, I got you covered. Yeah. So I was ready. I was yeah. Hot. Now, you could call your first experience on Drag Race like a gigantic Drag Race on a Dime challenge. Oh, yes. <laughs> Now, how many times did you audition for Drag Race? I auditioned twice. I auditioned to be on season eight and didn't hear a thing back. Not an email, not a, mm. nothing, mm -hmm. nothing, girl, nothing. And then uh, when season nine came around, I was so offended. I was like, who are these bitches? Whatever, right? <laughs> Lady Red understands that feeling sometimes. That, that. You're like, I'm not going to do it again. Forget it. Forget it. Mm -hmm. And then I had literally that year, I went through so much. I thought I was trans. I was like, well, maybe I need to transition. Oh. I was really depressed. It was just so much going on in my life. And my friend said, no to all of that. You just need to audition one more time. And I was like, no. And so then he talked to one of my friends that I didn't know. And they were like, well, we're just going to make your video. Wait a minute. I'm too controlling for that. You're just not going to tell me what you're going to do. We don't do that over here. <laughs> um, and we started and I got it. And I was like, bitch, they emailed me. And it, you know, they sent you an email and it goes like this. <clears throat> we received your videotape, but this don't mean nothing. So don't get your hopes up. Essentially. Mm -hmm. Essentially. And then boom, <laughs> they kept going and kept going. So, so I got it. So you know you're going to go. You got two weeks or something to prepare? No, thank God. I ha actually had a month, but, uh, okay, so being just, this was my, my psyche. One, I didn't have a whole bunch of funds, right? Now, Kansas City is cheap. So my rent, I had a, like a one-bedroom apartment, balcony, everything for six fifty. Wow. Lovely, honey. Lady Red, pack our things. <laughs> We're about to move to Kansas City. <laughs> oh, no. Very, very that. So life was affordable. So my life was good. I had, you know, drags, whatever, da da da, da. And I get the call, like, wait a minute. So I was too ashamed and too embarrassed to really ask people to. I was so afraid that me telling the wrong person would ruin my chances and, you know, whatever word would get back. So, but my surroundings were very vanilla, very white. And just being a black man asking for money, I was very like, ooh, whatever. Mm. So I think I had probably borrowed maybe three thousand. Uh huh. Miss Cracker, that ain't nothing. That ain't yeah. nothing. Miss Cracker <laughs> said she borrowed ten thousand. You yeah. know what I mean? And the bitch turned up. Uh -huh. Lovely. That was not my life. So I knew that I could sew, or at least Jimmy rig a look. I call myself the MacGyver of drag. <laughs> yes. And I knew that you just needed to walk down the runway at least twice looking good. So bitch, I can do that. Um, and I thought I was given something, but girl, no ma'am. What was the reality of being there and doing it like compared to what you thought? Oh, and you, okay, you know, you get the TV drag race and real drag race are very different things. Um, but then even like after the first challenge and everybody starts to de-drag and we unpack our bags and seeing what the other girls had in there, like their little section, it was very... Girl, just to go back. Uh, it was just very hard just to be like, I'm so not prepared in a sense, mm. physically. Yeah. But bitch, I was like, put me in the challenge because she's ready to go. Right. And so I was there. Yeah. I was ready. So what was your favorite moment of that year? Season 10. Do you Ooh. have a favorite moment? Uh, <laughs> or was it all so intense it was that it's hard to look at it No, in that here way? you go, here you go. No, I will never forget. Seeing Asia O'Hara was probably a favorite moment because I had knew of her. She was a former Miss Gay America. Um, and seeing Monet, who I had saw on social media, who I thought she was like 5'2", and that bitch is like the black man from the Green Mile. <laughs> right. She is a dude. Uh, but she's petite now. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you threw that in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she's thin. <laughs> she's working on it. Uh, 
Ooh, I'm a dude too. Uh, excuse me. Um, I would say that moment with Alyssa Edwards off camera. She said, "Look, try to win the competition, but if you don't try, if you don't win, win America." Um, she says because few people remember the winners, but she says, "But they they know me, mm. and I didn't win." And I was like, "Boom, got it." Um, and so I would say that was probably my favorite moment. Besides, girl, that horrible cartwheel. Just, ugh. The cartwheel was a moment. Girl. You have to probably relive girl. over and over yes, and over fans again. fans love to be like, this is how my Monday's going. Boom. And just tag you <laughs> in the day of meme. And you're like, girl. Whatever. But I knew it was horrible when Michelle and Carson both, like, I remember I did that cartwheel. And I, it was wonky. One, I learned that I can't go this way. Mm. My arm's not strong for that. Mm. But this way I can do. Oh. Then I tried to do that Trinity, the tuck, uh, tumble that she did at the end of season nine. I started this way, but ended up this way. <laughs> and um, Carson and Michelle were both like, ooh. And I was like, well, bitch, good night. Mm. And, ooh, yes. Take me back to Brown Cow Stunning. That very moment? Yeah. Okay, so here you go. The, they gave you the category, and the category read something like country couture, denim and diamonds, you know, da 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 Right. Country couture. So I'm thinking, well, the last time they did a country-like concept, Mystique Summers Madison, right? And I was like, I can't be that girl. So then I was like, I was in Joanne's. Thank you. Shout out to Joanne's Fabrics. Right. And I saw this brown cow... Look. <laughs> Y'all can say it was a giraffe all you want to, honey. But I was like, girl, this is brown cow. My friend was there with me. She was like, girl, this is Sydney. <laughs> and I was like, oh, brown cow, study. Wow. <laughs> and then Vixen was like, girl, you know that's giraffe, right? And I was just like, <laughs> look, I ain't going to let the devil get in my head right now, okay? We just rebuke all accusations. <laughs> I'm good, okay? I am good. Girl, I got out there, modeled it, had my little tearaway moment. <laughs> Yes, boom, boom, did. boom. <laughs> and then Michelle goes, girl, that's giraffe. And I'm thinking giraffe is brown and yellow or brown and gold. This was brown and white. Right. That's a cow. I'm from the Midwest. <laughs> girl, we got cows that look like this. <laughs> Maybe not in this exact pattern, but uh, the color scheme was there. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. So, but... Um, <laughs> Now, season 10 was also important because Vixen, uh, who really started off, really put a spotlight on the sort of inequality of how the fans treat queens of color on Drag Race. And how hope. the perception for fights and things like that is yeah. sometimes fun for the white queen, and then if it's a black queen doing it, they're called a bitch and they're given a the lot of The angry black girl. And and what is your that. experience with that, and how did you feel about that kind of coming out during the season? I received it in a small way on season 10, but I would say I received it more so on All Stars being called a baboon, an ape, wow. just all kinds of just hateful things because I said that Miss Valentina needed to go home. Mm. I was like, y'all know this is a competition, right? <laughs> right. And y'all know that we filmed this yeah. before y'all even knew anything about it, girl. So this ain't new. Wow. We have no qualms, no issues. It's just... It's really crazy how, but this is what I say, the fandom, first of all, which is predominantly white, because, you know, that's just statistics, whatever, you know, we make up 15% of the nation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the fandom can see themselves in white queens. Mm -hmm. The fandom may like black queens or queens of color. However, they can only see themselves in them to a particular point because of shade. Mm. So... Though you may love me, you can never see yourself in me, so it's easier to hate me because all of the shit or all of the stuff that you may not think on a regular basis about people of color is still already there and built in subconsciously, whether you want to agree with it or not. So let something come up against one of your faves or whatever, all of that subconscious hate is now triggered and now it spews out. So it's just very effed up. In yeah. the sense, um, and so it's, Vixen, I will say, she will never, ever, 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 ever like pander or soft shoe or tap dance <laughs> yeah. for the white folks. She's not going to do it. No. Um, I have had, I've learned how to, I am a beloved black queen, but I am a black man. Mm -hmm. And so when I want to educate or get a get a bitch together or read someone, I have to kind of take this big mom approach mm -hmm. um, and go, look, Sugarfoot, 
You know what I mean? You got to start yeah. with an affirm, you know, that affirm, rebuke, affirm that they teach in, you know, pastoral ministries. Um, I have to kind of come that way. So one, I don't jack up my bag. Two, being blackballed in Hollywood is very real or just in the industry. And I take care of my mama. So you can't mess up my coins because I started with the check and I will continue to get them. Yes. So I have. So for me, I just had to learn how to either sometimes just let ignorant people say what they want, what's hurt you because you go. Like, you hate me simply because of shade. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything about that. And what you were conditioned to think about people that look like me is, has nothing to do with me. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to be tender and emotional, but like, it happens on a regular basis, right. even still after Drag Race. Um, and how, just you know, on any sector, they praise mediocrity, and then they just, it just, it's, it hurts, so you just have to go, look, Sugarfoot, right. Sugar Bear, let me get you together and let you know. Like, I had a fan drew, they drew this beautiful photo of me, but they took the, the look from All Stars 4, where it was me and my, my, my Judy, mm -hmm. um, and that whole little, like, funny animated look, and she made both of the characters white. Well, sis, that's called whitewash. Right. So I have to go, my dear, anytime. You know, it's just that place of I have to affirm you before I educate you and rebuke you uh -huh. because at the end of the day, I am still not a black drag queen. I am a black man, and black men are not beloved in America mm. um, and specifically throughout the world. So it's just that weird place of just having to navigate and Depending on who you are, how you choose to navigate is how you choose to navigate. And I just choose to navigate like Big Mama from church right. uh, and, and, and just do it that way. So it's just crazy.